so uh, more people will be joining us in the meantime should we start with some of the uh, questions that we have received online sure yeah one second so we had two stories posted and uh, many people have responded and they have given lots of questions one second Give it. Um, doctor, I'm taking out some of the, of the questions, but in the meantime, I just want to ask you um, things uh, which many of the people have been asking me all this while. One is, uh, you know, how to take care of yourself during the heat, um, whether they should exercise or not, and if, then how much. And the second and the most common question that I'm getting from many of the people is uh, the back problem. Lots and lots of people are complaining of back problems nowadays. Uh, we do not know okay. if it's of lockdown or is it that they are sitting in one position or what, but many complain people are complaining of back pains nowadays. Yeah, so the back pain, we've been getting patients, a lot of patients coming into our office with and without MS with increasing back pain. And that's because most people are working from home or they're a lot less active than they're used to being. So the advice is, you know, if people have to work eight hours a day, try not to sit for more than an hour at a time. Because if you sit for like two, three hours, everything is being compressed. So I recommend for everyone to try to stand up every 45 minutes to one hour. Um, try to do some stretching. And really when you're seated, try not to be in that posture where you're very like hunched forward because everything is going to get tense throughout the middle back, throughout the neck, throughout the shoulders. Um, and really just try to keep up with like just some walks throughout the day too because you know a lot of people are used to being more active at their jobs and now they're a lot less active and starting to gain weight um yeah. which can also increase back pain so definitely try to keep yourself moving throughout the day as much as possible yeah so one of the ladies uh, she had written to me that uh, um, she was very active earlier walking a lot at least minimum 10 to fifteen thousand steps she used to take earlier but now because of probably lockdown she is not able to take a lot of steps but her standing time has increased dras drastically uh, maybe because of standing time she's getting a lot of backache uh, so she was asking that you know how much on an average should a person ideally stand per day uh, because uh, of lockdown and not going out standing is something which has increased from there for them rather than walking Right. I would say, I mean, there's no, there's no average because everyone, you know, everyone is different, but um, even with the lockdown, just try to walk around the house or, you know, go to the backyard or if so, like around the porch, but try to take some steps, even if it's like around the house or apartments. But I would just say for every, you know, for every hour that someone is seated, you want to do at least 10 to 15 minutes of standing. Okay. Um, that way, that way, not everything's being compressed throughout the whole time. Right. Um, the other thing is, uh, uh, one of the patients has written me uh, that why do I keep forgetting uh, easy stuff? So she has lots of yes. problems nowadays. Yes. So can we relieve um, MS with uh, memory and physiotherapy? Can that be helpful in any ways? Memory problems. So memory is more, that wouldn't be, I mean, what, what I try to do in my clinic as a physical therapist is, you know, when we, we use boxing quite a bit and I'll have them remember, like start with four or six or eight combinations, say like left, left, right, left. And I try to incorporate some cognitive components within my cardiovascular and kind of uh, coordination workouts because it does affect the memory. But if someone is having true, true memory issues, then I would say going to some, like they have something called a cognitive therapist, which can specifically work on 
short term or long memory. Um, I recommend getting a neuropsychological evaluation because they can test your memory and cognitive and reaction response. But I would say that's more so like a cognitive therapist or if not cognitive therapist, I know speech can work on memory a little bit um, or even occupational therapy. A speech therapy and an occupation therapy. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, we have a, a message from Evi. Evi has joined us already, but he has messaged us here saying that my left leg is weaker than my right and I walk so bad. What exercise is good for me? Evi, this is my question. So what part of the, uh, what part, because, so I think what we discussed in our first call was that fatigue occurs because one side of the body gets weaker and we try to compensate and work harder to walk normally and then the body doesn't respond and that's why it kind of seems like it shuts down so we have to try to figure out what is the part of the body that's weaker is it the ankle is it the knee or is it the hip and certain exercises that we perform like let's say we do three sets on you know a leg kick or a leg extension I would always recommend to do an additional two or three sets on the weaker side so we could try to balance it out a little bit better. But for him, for um, Evie, I would, we would really try to see, is it the ankle that's weaker? Is it the knee? Is it the quad? Is it the hamstring? Is it the hip flexor? A lot of times it's usually either the ankle or the hip flexor that gets weak, and that's what causes trouble like going up and down the stairs or clearing obstacles, and that's why falls occur. So try to figure out what is that what is that muscle that's causing that weakness and try to focus the exercises around that specific muscle. Right. Um, Evie, are you are there online with us. Can you hear and answer the question? Uh, the question the doctor is asking? Okay. Okay. Uh, so anyways, moving on to the next question. Uh, we've got a question from Horlin. Uh, she was there with us last time and uh, she has messaged that what exercises can I do to help the spasticity and numbness in your feet specifically? So you have numbness in both your feet. Yeah, so with the spasticity, you want to do more prolonged stretching. Um, you don't want to kind of do like a quick stretch. You want to do more prolonged. So a lot of times it could happen in the hamstring or the calf. And some of those stretches would be, you know, instead of holding for like 15 to 20 seconds, you want to try to hold that stretch for a good three seconds. Um, ice has been shown to really reduce spasticity, especially in patients with like stroke. Um, you can try doing like an ice bath. So let's say the, you know, just kind of dip your foot or dip the leg into the ice for about five seconds, take it out and try to repeat that around 10 times. Um, the numbness, so the numbness can be from multiple regions. Mm -hmm. It could be from the back. Um, it could be from a nerve, like a peripheral nerve. And there's a lot of things that you could do like nerve tension glides. So a lot of times people with MS have back problems because when they're losing their balance, they'll kind of extend backwards and pinch the nerves. So if we figure out which nerve is being pinched and we do a, like a specific exercise technique for that nerve, it can help reduce the numbness. Okay. Um, and uh, doctor, lots of people, not only just leg, the feet, uh, people are complaining about numbness on their hands also. So uh, what about that? Stretching is the best thing for the numbness, is it? Say the last part again. Is stretching the best thing for numbness? Oh, stretching. Yeah, so, I mean, similar to the back, the nerves in the neck, if those are being pinched from, like, bad posture or weakness, like if their head is tilted one side, it can compress one side of the neck. And that can also cause, like, numbness or fingering in the fing uh, numbness or tingling in the fingertips. So something we could do, I mean, if it's left-sided numbness, one thing that we showed previously was having an arm on the neck and really just stretching away. Right. So we can get that kind of upper trap to stretch, 30 second holds. Um, you, when you're at the computer, you also want to make sure you're not kind of down. You want to make sure when you're on your phone that your head is not flexed because all those things will compress the neck. Sleeping is also very important. If individuals will sleep on their stomach, 
that can cause some kind of nerve compression. So sleeping on the stomach is actually the worst position for anyone. You want to try to really sleep either on your back or your side. And you want to really try to just use one pillow. Because if we're three pillows, that can kind of compress the neck in one direction. Um, and the last portion is really trying to figure out where is the numbness coming from in your arm? Is it from the elbow? Is it from the neck? Is it from like a carpal tunnel? So EMG or a nerve conduction test, that can specifically tell you where is the numbness coming from. But a lot of times I see that it's from the median nerve. So one of the videos we showed, like if you have your arm up this way and you extend the elbow and then you extend your wrist and then come back, if that causes a little bit of pins and needles, that's a good thing. That means you want to, that means that's the source of your pain. So I usually recommend to extend the elbow, extend the wrist, come back. 10 times, about three times per day. Um, you want to start looking straight ahead and then to make that nerve tense a little bit more, you can look the opposite way. And then try those and see if that causes some of that numbness. You know, I'll tell you, when I was diagnosed with MS initially, um, so uh, I was asked just to, you know, fold my, hold my hands like this. And I just could not even touch my hands. There was like a current flowing in my hands. And then the, they asked me to, you know, just straighten my arm and touch the wall. I could not even do that. I could not even straighten my palm because I just felt like a current flowing in my body. I mean, that's how when the doctor said, yes, you have MS because you have lots of current flowing in the body. But yes, now I can do this. I can straighten my arm. I can do the stretches. But that was an initial thing that I personally started with. When I was diagnosed, um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of nerve, a lot of nerve inflammation. Yeah, it was bad. So uh, the moment I used to you know probably um, laugh out loud, uh, look down also, and the moment I used to look down, I used to feel a current flowing from my head to toe, and you know I could just stop everything, whatever I could, was doing. It was uh, it was mainly the current flowing in my body that time. That was like an electric shock. So yeah, right. that's what, how it was. Um, yeah, I'm going on asking the questions which I have received online. Uh, in the meantime, if you guys also have any questions, you know, you can go ahead and ask in between. So, Naija, do you have any questions to ask? I saw you smiling when doctor said, don't sleep on your stomach. <laughs> yes, hi everyone. <laughs> yeah, um, so I'm a stomach sleeper. And when he said that, when um, Dr. Zola, when you said that's the worst position ever, I was like, oh, okay, well, I need to try and fix that. <laughs> but it's, it's a very comfortable position. But so yeah. what happens is if you're on your stomach, your head is either kind of like up to the right or it's exactly. up to the right. And then that can also, not just for MS, but if you tense up one side of your head, that could cause a lot of jamming in the upper cervical spine, which can cause a lot of headaches too. So anytime I have a patient who comes into my clinic with headaches, we always ask them how do they sleep? Because if you're sleeping on your, usually what happens is one part of the cervical spine gets out of proportion and it gets mm -hmm. rotated in one direction. And that's why you get a lot of nerve tension that can cause like headaches or migraines. I used to have a lot of headaches and migraines. Right. So that so. kind of explains it now. And also what, um, what Ruti said that um, bending my head down to my chest, so my chin to my chest, and then back up that had a lot of like electricity went through flowing through my body you too oh, but i yeah i mean yeah so that's how i got the diagnosis also last year that was one of the main things and but i noticed now that it's much that okay. it's way less yeah it's it's much better which dmt are you picking the item um tech federa tech federa okay yeah all right what are you I've, taking i'm taking avenix okay I mean, it's worse. I had the same exact issue. Pardon? I had the same exact issue. I would look down and I would feel like electricity going straight down my spine. Oh, and now is that okay with all the stretches that you do? Yeah, yeah. It, it got a lot better, but the only thing that I have an issue with now is I have like severe insomnia. Insomnia? Yes. A doctor, yes, um, Emmett just asked about insomnia. So I have lots of people, you know, asking about insomnia, maybe because of lockdown or whatever, their time schedule is going pretty haywire. Everybody is nowadays, you know, complaining of insomnia. 
is this something that person can do before going to bed so that they get sleep you know people do take uh, tea or they you know probably use essential oils um, to get some sleep but is there something which you can suggest a person should normally do ms and insomnia does go hand in hand but maybe i think it's a stressful situation out there probably which is affecting people more yeah so what i would recommend is i mean you want to try to regulate your sleep cycle a little bit you don't want to go to sleep one day at midnight one day at 9 p.m one day at 10 o'clock you want to really try as best as possible to to go to sleep and wake up around the same time every day um we recommend Russian patients as well but the other thing that most individuals don't know is you want to try not to really watch or play with any electronics two hours before bed so no tv try to limit your use of phones because anything like that will stimulate it might be harder to fall asleep um now like you were saying yeah essential oils i know lavender can really help calm the system listening to some audible tapes to really just help relax everything but i would say mainly try to wake up and go to sleep the same time every night limit the use of electronic activity two to three hours prior to bed i think that's something which is very rare nowadays everybody's so addicted to their mobiles and uh, right, yeah. that you know people just can't get rid of it while just trying to say something okay so i have a suggestion it worked for me because the pills actually stopped working to go to sleep because i had severe insomnia so another fellow ms or told me to get um the nighttime chamomile add honey to it and a little splash of oat milk and that actually helped me calm the body and i go to sleep very fast i don't know if, if it worked for me and it's worked for her and everybody that she's okay. helped so i don't know if, if that would actually help but that's like a natural way of doing it as well because like i said for me the pills just stopped working i got so used to them my body was so used to the pills that it just they completely stopped working so that's just a small suggestion i have yeah i'm i'm close to that point now um i would go to sleep for 6 hours every 24 hours oh wow so um i'm taking i don't have any allergies but i'm taking benadryl and advil pm just to go to sleep just to go to sleep yeah like i remember when i was first diagnosed i couldn't go to sleep i was going on almost a week without sleep they were giving me morphine they were giving me everything and then all of a sudden i broke into a rash and they gave me benadryl i stayed for almost two days straight wow yeah i would i would sleep for a uh, extra pull long at time um mm -hmm. i would wake up at 4 o'clock in the afternoon after i took the benadryl mm -hmm. and the tylenol pm but then i'm drowsy the entire day oh, yeah. since the medication the drowsy the entire day yeah yeah like this and i just as much as possible yeah yeah and i just it, it was just weird because um I just started the Ocrevus. Yeah. And this actually started after I took it. I didn't have the insomnia before. I would um I would speak to your neurologist 100% because it it might be effect of the medication. Yeah. Um that's really cuz everyone has different is going to respond differently. Um I know I'm not sure where you're from but acupuncture if they have acupuncture near you i would try to maybe try that because for me i'm always trying to find natural ways to do it like taking an advil um pm and a benadryl every day that's not really you know feasible for the rest of the life we want to try to i would try to find like more natural pathways um okay. and i would ask that with your neurologist because if it's just something it could be just from the medication yeah i i've spoken to him um but actually i'm near you i'm near woodbridge new jersey Oh wow, yeah, that's 15 minutes for me. Yeah. I'm I I live in PA, but I'm I'm from Jersey originally. My live dad in lives in Woodbridge. That's so funny. Yeah, that's 15 minutes from where I am. Okay. I think you should visit him sometime probably. Yeah, when I seen the location, that's the first thing I said. So I definitely got to got to go there. Um Have you been I to like MS uh events? They have No. member every every year in Woodbridge have you been to that one from the MS society no um it's been um it's going to be 5 years this july that i was diagnosed but i just started to feel 
like I had MS the last year. Gotcha. So you were pretty symptomatic. Yeah. So now, like, all the symptoms are getting to me now. The first four years, I was okay. And um, I was on Jelenia. And uh, I ran out of medication, and my body started to shut down. So when my body started to shut down, um, you know, I, could, I couldn't walk or anything like that. So the doctor um, put me back on Jelenia, but then uh, they found new lesions on my brain and everything like that. That's when he uh, said, let's try a different medication. Right, right. Who's, is your neurologist in New York or, I mean, in uh, New Jersey or Pennsylvania? He's in Pennsylvania. Who's that? I don't know them. Because I live, I live in the Poconos. So okay. I'm, I'm right there where, uh, I know uh, you probably don't know him, but his name is Dr. Nathanson. No, I'm not familiar with them. But yeah, he's, um, he, he's a good doctor, but it's just, you know, uh, getting the MRIs on time and and it's like he's so busy you know what I mean um that it's kind of hard to get with him sometimes even when I reach out to you know his nurses you know I'll leave a message with them I'll get a call back maybe three days later type of thing and um there's a lot of the things that you know that happen that's new to me that I don't I didn't know what was a, a a symptom. Like recently, my wife, she was like, man, you feel real hot. Like, well, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. And then next thing you know, I see like a video. They was like, yeah, you know, that's one of the symptoms. I'm like, yeah. I, I, did, I did not know that. Like I was oblivious to all the, to all the signs because I, I it's little things that you don't know that I didn't know. You know, the only thing that I had at one point was the optic neuritis. Yeah. That's how he found it. I lost some of the vision in my right eye. And yeah, it's, it, that's one of the first symptoms usually. Yeah, and that that was, you know, I was literally right after my football season. And it was like, yeah, we, we don't think you should play anymore. You know, because of that, they said a lot of people play with MS, but they don't you know, lose their vision, you know, they might have some other issues, but that's, you know, too important with playing football. So you know, right. I don't think you should really play anymore. So So you got diagnosed very young. Um yeah, well I'm gonna be thirty two soon, but um yeah, like I, I was I was younger. Um what what I don't understand is um but at the time that I was diagnosed, I was probably like the most healthiest I could be. At what age? So, how many years since you've been living with MS? Uh, five. Five years. Okay. Yeah. So I, I that that's what really baffled me, because uh, you know some people say, hey, your diet, you know, workout, and all of this type of stuff, and um. You know, while doing the football, I say after football, I'll be a bodybuilder. So I was halfway in the bodybuilding world, um, halfway, you know, with the football, with how I looked and everything like that. So it was like, like, like I got sick. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, man, I dieted for, for six years before I got diagnosed and I was fine. And right after my football season, um, you know, I kind of took a break. And then I got diagnosed. Yeah. And a lot of the, the, the depression and everything settled in like real hard because I didn't understand why it happened when it happened. You know, so that, that still baffles me because now everybody say, hey, you should be a vegan. And you should do this and you should do that. Because everybody becomes doctors after a while, I guess, because they they read about veganism and, and, and everything. And I hear about all these different diets you could go on. Some some people that I speak with that have MS, I ask them, do they eat red meat? Some say yes, some say no. Yeah, so every, I mean, we talked about that in one of our meetings. And 
everyone has like different dietary recommendations and everyone responds to inflammation. So everyone can have certain foods that they may be inflamed to, no matter if they're healthy or not. Like someone could just be inflamed to like bro uh, broccoli or cauliflower, you know, something healthy body not just responds. So you find a diet that's because something that works for you might not work for someone else, even though it's like a healthy diet. Okay. Okay. On, on that note, um, very quick, I know I mentioned it before, um, what you need to do is get an allergy panel to know what causes very bad inflammation and what doesn't. That's like what for I was example, ask. For, Yeah, because for example, for me, I don't have that, um, that anaphylactic shock with almonds, but I do have inflammation to it. It does show that I'm slightly allergic to it, so I just avoid it completely. And I didn't know when I was drinking almond milk because I cannot, my body cannot handle any product that comes from a cow. Okay. Whether it's just the beef, it's milk, and I, anything that comes from a cow, my body cannot handle. And I go, like the, the actual meat will give me actual anaphylactic shock. And it cannot mm. handle it. But that's a suggestion. Like I, d I didn't even think about it until I decided to take control over everything. And the one that suggested it was my neurologist. He suggested, he was like, hey, maybe we should try an allergy panel to see what you're allergic to. And it came out of nowhere. And once I found out, I cut it that stuff. I adjusted what I was eating and that worked fine. And not only that, it helped me get rid of a lot of medication because the only medication I'm, I'm on right now is Ocrevus. That's it. I don't take anything else. How long have you been on Ocrevus? I just started it. As soon as this pandemic started, I started Ocrevus. So it was very, very hard. And then they okay. divided and You know, they divided in two, right? Like they yeah, in two. The yeah. One. Yeah, so I was over there for like almost eight hours. I had to wait all the process, like just how it goes. And before that, I was on Tysabri, and I was responding very well to Tysabri, but my JC went skyrocket, like it skyrocketed out of nowhere. So I had to stop it, and I was without medication for almost, I'm going to say almost four months, four or five months. Wow. Because it just my body was just kind of like, okay, we can do it, but I'm not sure. So the only thing that I'm experiencing right now is that I get, um, like, well, like right now I'm sitting down and I'm sweating all over, like everywhere. It's just like, like a, I don't even know what they're called. I'm just having that moment on the brain. I can't think. It's just like a heat thing. Like I'm just starting yeah. to sweat out of nowhere. But other than that, I haven't had any issues. Except that I started walking and I doubled my walking to about an hour and a half in almost twice the speed. And uh, I think it was about two days ago two days ago two three days ago and then yesterday last night I, I my body hit um exhaustion like very very bad where I was just sitting down and I would just start going like that and I would just drop because I was wow. so tired because of the heat also not just in medication but also the climate the atmosphere. Well, you, and then, yeah and then I live in California so the weather hasn't been helping over here Okay. And, but oh my god I just that exhaustion has been for last night I was like I told my sister can you just take my temperature because I feel like I have a fever and of course we started getting paranoid and we get and all this but it was just my she's like you're fine I'm like I don't get it like I'm like I have chills and I'm so cold and she's like but your body's normal I'm like I don't know and I was like I was talking to her my eyes were closed I woke up today like nothing like nothing so it's just, I don't know, I think I just pushed myself a little too much with the walking. So today I'm fully resting. I'm just going to lay in bed. I'm not going to do much today. I have to listen to my body. I just can't push it anymore. Like they say, you have to listen to your mind as well as the body together. Yes. And then take slow steps. When you want, the body says, relax, you need to sleep for two, three days. You sleep for two, three days. That's okay. But you have to break, take a break sometimes in between to recover your body. That's fine. Um, okay, my uh, our Zoom will again get disconnected probably in five minutes since it's a forty second se forty minute session. Then we can join back again. Um, I can read that Claire has certain that she is also like for example, uh, she cannot tolerate cow's milk, and um, so yeah, so everybody has their own uh, uh, tendency of whether they like some their body is adapted to something or not. For example, some of the people they feel that legumes are bad for them. Legumes make them really tired but eat. For some people, it's the um, cow's milk or the almond milk. So everybody, you know, should maintain their own diary to see and see that what really helps them and what doesn't. Everybody's body is different. I have a question here by Sate, and he has written that, Doctor, my throat gets really dry 
and sometimes even starts to hurt. Can you suggest what to do to fight? Yeah, I, I read that question earlier. Um, honestly, that's that's not really like a physical therapy question. I, I would, um, I, I can't really answer that. I mean, that could be allergies, yes. but I would I would refer you back to like a ENT doctor um, to keep yourself hydrated. I mean, I know a lot of my patients with Parkinson's, they get really dry throats and it's really just, you might not be creating enough saliva. So just really just try to keep yourself hydrated. That's the only thing I can kind of recommend. But other than that, I would say check with the ENT and ears, nose, throat doctor or um, primary care physician. Right. I have another question from Iman Ali. Yes, Hi. Any specific exercises or stretching for MS hug? So that was one that we discussed, I believe, last week. Um, any type of tightness throughout the chest, yeah. you really yeah. just want to open it up as best as you can. So a good one is having the arms in front, like by a door handle, leaning through. So you get everything throughout the arms to open up. Arms overhead through a doorway, same thing. Lean, lean forward so you get everything in the back. Um, another really good one, if you guys have a physio ball or a foam roller at home, or if not, just really lay on your back and let your arms hang down. But it's best to do that with a physio ball because your body can kind of create like an arch. Uh, making sure it doesn't that does not hurt your back as well and then if you're laying down make sure you have your arms kind of like extended this way so you get everything to open up while you're in those positions of kind of opening up the chest wall that's when i would recommend try to some really some deep breathing because a lot of times we get some shallow breaths and we don't really focus on taking deep breaths in and deep breaths out so while everything's expanded try to work on um, try to work on some of that and that can help expand everything. Right. I have a quick question on that. Um, so I don't have that type of ball because I used to do it with the yoga ball and the we have a dog and she popped it. So this is what I use. Um, hold on, just thinking about the mess. I sit basically on here and then this is where I put my back so I can stretch. Is that okay? Is that even, because it feels good, but I don't know if it's actually Yeah, as good. long as it's not hurting your back. That's fine. No. Yeah. You want to make sure your, your spine is not hyper arched. Um, oh, no, so no, no. as long as you feel like your back is straight, you mm -hmm. know, even if you have a foam roller at home, you could take like a really thick sweatshirt or a blanket, roll that up and use that to kind of lay put that alongside of your spine and, and you utilize that. Okay. Yeah. I was just wondering, cause when you said that I was, cause I used to use it with a yoga ball, the really big ball. But we have a dog, I left it outside, and she thought it was just a toy, and bye to that. Okay, uh, we have a question from Isa. She had also written on Instagram this one, that how to deal with being so sore after starting exercise after MS relapse? Yeah, um, that's more so, I mean, if, if someone hasn't exercised in three weeks, four weeks, six weeks, mm -hmm. That's when you want to really reinitiate exercise, but gently. Like you don't want to go from not working out for a month or two months to working out for an hour and a half that first day. Soreness is a good thing. It means you made the muscles work. Um, you can really just try to eat healthy meals full of like carbs and protein to kind of refuel everything. Um, there's something like, you know, I don't know if you're if there's like performance recovery centers or something called Norma Tech that helps with blood flow and everything. Or compression boots that can be put on <coughs> but really, or you know the, the first time you do a workout you're gonna get very sore the second time you shouldn't get as sore and after, out more and more should kind of go away yeah I'm just gonna chime in really quick so I definitely have to admit I probably did overdo it I mean I don't know what MS person doesn't when they try to get back on their feet because they're on their butts for two months like I was. Um, just a little update, I did get my doctor's MRI results back and she says they're stable. I don't really know what that means. I haven't talked to her. So I'm assuming there's no new lesions. I don't really know. Um, what sucks about MS and the situation that we're in now, so what she, she said, even though my tests um, coronavirus were negative. She's leaning towards that, the fact that I had the coronavirus, which was the GI tract, which is very difficult to diagnose. 
what it did was um, give me like pseudo exacerbation, which is basically all my old symptoms just said, hi, we're just going to bother you for two months. Um, so yeah, I had a lot of, um, Michael had a lot of atrophy. I'm very thin. Um, you know, I'm super duper duper flexible because I've been stretching for like 20 years. So you saw my videos and I think everybody else did, but like, I'm super sore, like nothing hurts like painful. So I know I didn't get injured, but like, I want to try to do something again today, like not lose any ground. Um, but should you, like after 48 hours of being this sore, um, like I can sit and stand. It's not like I got, oh my God, I have to like lower myself to the toilet and stuff. Like I've been there before when I used to play tennis and it was competitive. I, I, I know what that's like, but it just feels like I'm going to get set back again. So I just wanted to know, like, should I get on my ro foam roller? I mean, I really, really intuitive eating is my deal. Like I just watch what I eat. I see how it hits me. I understand the, the dynamics of all of that. So where are you? I'm sorry. Like the arms or is it full body? Full body. Um, I, I don't, I, I noticed how, how weak I was, um, in particular areas, my upper body. Um, the last thing I heard was it was like full body soreness. You should use the foam yeah, roller. It really, it really is like, nothing that feels like I pulled anything or nothing feels like I did anything wrong. I think it's just my body had been sedentary for so long, even though I tried in intermittently to try to do stuff because I know how much it helps recovery in regardless of what you have. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, I've never really known how to address. I have a stim machine, my own from back in the day from when I had a knee injury, you know, I know how to use it. Um, I've applied heat, I've applied ice, I just, I'm over it. Dude. I, I think it's just where I'm at. Like I'm, I try, you know, like the body's just saying, I don't know. I just was wondering if I could just at least get rid of the soreness so I can continue what I'm, I've been trying to I, do. Yeah. It so, yeah. I mean, worked out different body parts, but you didn't do. <coughs> Not and work out that body part. Um, I mean, the soreness, you could try rolling it out, but just go gentle. But you don't, yeah. um, but it's, it's usually, if you haven't done anything for a while and you did a nice workout, it's probably going to take you like three to four days to get rid of it. That's just, that's for natural. Has it been longer than that or has it been about three or four days? Well, I only worked out uh, for two days, yesterday and the day before. And yesterday even, it took me a while just to get on my mat. I was just like, my body kept saying, but I'm stubborn and I am... I push myself and that's just who I am. And it's not gonna change, unfortunately. <laughs> but I've, I've been like this, I'm gonna be 50 tomorrow. And you know, that's it. Um, so it's just, I've never really asked that question, you know, cause everybody gets sore. I'm an athlete, I've been an athlete my whole life. MS is not gonna hold me back in that regards. Um, but damn. <laughs> Like oh, you look amazing. You know, is real, so. Sorry to put in, but you look fantastic. Oh, Claire, I love you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Betin, I know this is probably a stupid query, but um, do you do like stretches after, you know, after you've done your exercise? Like I said, it's probably a stupid question because you know what you're doing. You, yeah. you know, I've seen your videos, but it's like, I know that if I forget to stretch, I'm in agony the next day. I feel like my muscles are somebody's like taking them and they're not mine, you know? Yeah, uh, you know, I took, I took the doctor's advice when I restarted my stretching routine day before yesterday. Um, I first, I, I skipped the rolling just because he advised against it or didn't really advise to do it. So I held my, my, my stretches that I'm very good at and that I know my body can handle at the beginning for 10 to 15 breaths, which is kind of a long time. Um, and that actually works the muscle out, believe it or not. So just in those things, um, and then, you know, trying to incorporate a little bit more movement, but so at the very end, it's honestly not that necessary because my whole workout routine per se was structured around really just opening up the body. And I may have just done way too much, been on the mat too much, and I get it, but that's not gonna change. My guess, my, my thing is, is 
you know, it didn't put me back in bed. It didn't make anything worse. It's just, I'm sore, you know, it's just like, God damn, you know, like I, like today is just like, I don't want to be more sore more. So like, it's just like, I get to that place mentally, I think, whereas like, if I go back on the mat and I try to do whatever, I'm still the perpetuation of the, the mu muscle fatigue and soreness. I'm just over it. So I just want to try to implement something holistic that can help me and my body, maybe just in certain areas, it doesn't have to be the whole body, just like maybe the quads or maybe, you know, my shoulders, because it's really wow. sore. Because from being sitting like this in pain all the time, and all of a sudden you start working out, like he talks a lot about opening up the, the chest and all that, like the MS hug, I have that shit all the time. So I did that with bands and I did shoulder opening, all that things, and I am sore, <laughs> I'm sore, man. And, so yeah, that's just kind of where I'm at, and it's I just don't know what to do because ice, heat, like I don't even know. I don't even. I know was more. Just more like prolonged stretching, but you know everything you're saying is is normal, not just for MS, really for anyone who hasn't done activity for a few yeah. weeks, and then they okay. go back to doing like you know it's like a runner who didn't run for two months, and then they go out mm. and run five miles, you're gonna be very very sore. So just I mean day three and four you should be feeling way better, but in the meantime try to you could just try to do like prolonged stretching. Um, and you know, just try to work out. You don't have to not work out, but just try to do something that's not sore. So if your shoulders are sore and your legs are sore, try to do like a little bit of core workouts. Yeah. Or, or I, think, like I think just for the group and for just information, I think today I'm going to skip like the mat and I'm going to enjoy the Miami weather and just swim. That's it. That's like the easiest thing on the body, but I know I'm still going to be sore because, you know, swimming is a full body thing. Should I just do the standing stuff like you had originally told me when I was kind of in the Christ? Remember you said just do the little leg lifts and the, should I just do that or grab my kickboard? What do you think? I could, I mean, I would say do a little bit of everything. Okay. Yeah. Cause you're in the water. I mean, the water is going to be a lot less strenuous and, and then you can do, because in the water, your muscles are more relaxed. So I would go through like a little workout in the pool. And then from that point on, try to do some prolonged stretching at the very end. So do like hamstrings, calves. Um, you could do all, all the stuff you do on land, like calf stretch. You could do standing with uh, one knee bent, one leg back. Try to hold it for like a minute straight, each leg two times. Okay. Have your leg kind of above the, uh, the ledge and just lean forward. So your leg would be straight. I don't know if I can show it, but I, I know what you're talking about. I've done it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then shoulders, just like a little cross body stretch, or a good one you can do on the leg. Just have both arms up, have, and then just kind of lean your butt back. So kind of like this. Yeah, like my arms out of the pool, yeah. and then kind of yeah. like an L. Right. Okay. And then you're on your lats. That'll be in the water. Everything is relaxed. So that'd be actually the best place to do some stretching. Last question. Something just because I've had, this is probably my worst other than my hips, which you've addressed, but I never really addressed like the rotator cuff muscles, which I feel like when I roll and I, I put the roller here, um, yeah. I have a trainer. So that really hurts a lot. And then obviously they're all in the back right here. So those took kind a real big hit from just being in bed and hunched over. Would you recommend I, I continue to roll the rotator cuff muscles out or just continue with more therapeutic kind of opening up the shoulders? Because let me tell you, I used to be able to bring my hand, rotate my shoulder behind my head to grab my foot. I can't even bring my, like, it's like, I don't even know when that's going to happen. So I believe all those little itty bitty, the tres minor, the tres major, I know the you know, the little bit of physio, all of those, I'm not sure which one is really causing me a lot of problem. Cause when I get to that little spot, doctor, I just kind of stay there or I'll go with a lacrosse ball and I'll roll it, roll it, roll it, but it's not making any progress at all. And this is not just a new symptom that I have just from being an athlete. I think it's just from constant chronic pain and having to deal with bed rest or sitting or taking, you know, being inactive on and off for so you know not being able to be consistent with exercise and stuff like that it's the biggest problem is just getting to be able to like even rotate anything i'm not sure what's causing the constriction there and what to do about that but it's really bad right now yeah so i would the lacrosse ball is a good thing to do but when you're on it i would try to do it with some emotions you get like an active um, or you could just take a stick or like a broomstick, hold it up and kind of go behind your back all the way. Um, yeah. but that I hurt. would, I tried well, that and it hurt. 
you know, while you have that specific spot, try to do like active release. Okay. I'll keep you posted. All right. Um, just one thing uh, about soreness again, you know, this, I have a guy that, you know, whenever I do a lot of squats and all, you know, I get like terrible soreness and terrible pain in my thigh area maybe. And it, is, it becomes so bad that I start limping and, you know, earlier I was really active that, like I said earlier, I used to do 100 sit-ups in a day, 100 squats a day. Now I just cannot. If I do 25 in one time and I'm like, okay, I cannot exceed 25 also. You know, my thigh area has come out, you know, some, uh, somehow become really weak. You know, is there something which I can do? Maybe some stretches. I tried some stretches, but, um, you know, um, I somehow have to just give up doing it. And then it becomes all right after some days. It, I mean, I tried two, three times consecutively, but um, it's just that I cannot come back to that same routine of doing squats. You know, that beats the way I school before. Yeah, if you're doing like 25 and that's getting you really sore, then I try to do, instead of doing 25 straight, maybe do like three rounds of eight. So do eight, take like a minute break, do eight, take a minute break, and then do that again. That way you're not doing 25 in a row because it might just be more the endurance. Um, if that's no problem, then from that point on, you can do like three rounds of 10 or 12 or 15. Do like 50 times and 100 times a day time um, consecutively now it's like 20 25 is also becoming like too much so it's like my energy level has become so low my muscles have become so um, weak that i'm not able to endure it yeah so i mean there's, there's a lot of exercises you could do like in, if the squats are a problem or maybe you might be going very low maybe try Maybe try not to do like a full squat, but you can do like a 30 degree squat or like a 45 degree squat. Or you could just, you know, if you're sitting down, just try to kind of come up and then come down. So you're not going all the way below your knees. Just try to do something that's a little bit less, um, you know, strenuous to your body. I'm going to chime in really quick for you. I did the chair squats that he recommended two Zoom meetings ago. Mm -hmm. And yes, on that because I struggle with squats because my legs are my biggest problem sometimes. And so I started with that and he was, I didn't want to start with that, but I walked and I got my chair because I'm stubborn and I want to do like be Superman. Um, and I used the chair a lot that day. And so, you know, sometimes our egos get in the way <laughs> like mine. I have the size of the United States is the ego right here. So that's why I probably am so sore. Um, so try the chair, you know, and, and reduce the reps, like he said, because for me, that was a game changer. And I was able to do some leg work and stretch work with the assistance of a chair for balance and just for everything. We just got to drop the ego a little bit and understand that we are limited, not by choice, and by illness. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes hard, yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, moving on to the other question. Isa, you have something else to ask? Yeah? Right. Uh, someone else wants to say something? Iman? Is, uh, are CBD products good for people with MS? Yeah, so I saw that question in, in the chat. Um, it's, I mean, it's the same as for everyone. There's so many different out there. You just have to be careful to make sure you're not taking one that has something in it that if you get drug tested, it could get you in trouble with your job or anything like that because we've had situations like that. But I would say it's, there's, there's a lot of, my whole thing is try to be as natural as you can. So I would rather have someone get some pain relief with CBD cream as opposed to taking like four Tylenols or four Advils. So I would really kind of leave that question open-ended for you guys. If you guys have found each other's, uh, if you found a specific CBD cream that you guys have found beneficial, maybe discuss it within yourselves. But every, there's so many different types out there. You just have to make sure the one that you're taking doesn't have something that, let's just say your job or whatever got you drug tested, that it would, you know, be a problem for you. Okay. But if you guys want to share, because I know we talked about that last week with essential oils, and then you guys gave your own recommendations um, of what was worked well for you guys, and that, I think that was a pretty good conversation. 
Eddie has written a question. Um, he wants some exercises that you can recommend for the back. Like I said, lots of people are coming with back problems nowadays. So Evi feels that he feels very weak and he wants some exercise recommendation for his back specifically. So probably we can, you know, make a MS Monday video for back exercise. I was just thinking that. So 100%. Um, I'll record it today and we'll post it tomorrow. Uh, we'll do we'll do that today. Yeah, it's it's very. I mean, it's just it's sometimes. I'm gonna try to give like six exercises, but you know, just really for the back. The way you want to protect your back is two ways. At home, when you're doing chores or you're picking something up, picking up a child, picking up a dog, you never want to like bend right at the waist. You always want to bend your knees. And I know with MS, if the knees are weak, it might be hard and we compensate. So really the goal is to practice like squatting so you can try to lift appropriately because the more you bend forward and the more you twist, you're gonna compress a nerve root in your back. So you could do all the exercise you want, but if you're gonna lift and twist the wrong way, you could feel your back spasm or give out. Um, that's one. And you know, the, the second thing is you want to try to make sure that your back is straight when you are doing exercises. So like if you're doing sit-ups, that's not necessarily a good exercise because it's compressing the spine. So what I'll try to do is I'll try to show six exercises today of uh, where your back is neutral, which means it's straight. And we can make that a post. Right. Thank you. Uh, we have another question from Zenaida and she has asked, are there any exercises you should not Say that again, it just broke up a little bit. Are there any exercises that you should not do with MS? I don't think so. Um, everyone is different. So really just going back to the, if you exercise one day and you can't get out of bed the next day, you, that means you did too much. If someone's starting exercise, always start off gentle um, and then progress your way up. Exercise in general, you're not going to see results in one day. You have to make it something consistent. So... You want to try to build a routine like every day I'm going to do this, whether it's 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes, but there's really no, there's no limitations. Um, you just want to make sure that you're going at your own pace and you're not trying to do too, too much at once and just really make sure to kind of keep form in mind to, to make sure doing it appropriately. But I wouldn't say there's any exercises that you shouldn't do. Um, I would try to do as much exercise as possible. Um, then we have a question written from Claire. Uh, Claire, you want to talk about that? Hello. Okay, so when I go on my daily trots every morning, um, I start off, I was saying earlier, I start off in sport mode and I really go for it. And I really shouldn't go so fast and start off. I know that I should start pacing and build up the sport mode. And then in my little routine, um, slow down and then finish my journey. So I'm working up to about an hour now and that's great for me because at my worst it was 20 minutes. And that's when I kind of knew I had a problem. Um, but I'm now up to about just over an hour so I'm really pleased. But what I've noticed, and it's slightly annoying and it does go away, it's not a biggie, it might not even be MS related because I'm all out there. It, not everything is MS related. I get like in one side of my neck and it slows me down, just a pain, just a real, real like, strange pain, a bit of an ache. And I'm thinking, is it because I'm just overheated or is it because I'm tired or is there some obvious reason for that? Is it something to do with the way I'm walking, maybe? I've walked too far. Too many questions. One side of unilateral pain could be associated with if you're, you know, if you're a right if you're righty by using your upper trap a lot so anytime you're like lifting something the main thing we want to focus on is that we're not doing this with our shoulders we want to I'm, I'm just i'm just walking that's all it is in the morning you, yeah um do you feel like your right side is weaker uh my neuro says that my left side is weaker and when i do my yoga which i do every day pretty much, I do about 50 minutes a day. Um, I notice when I do certain poses that my left side is weaker and indeed my right side is stronger. So may have something to do with it, I don't know. Yeah, 
uh, answer without actually like seeing you in person, but I would just try to do some stretches for the neck, like the one we showed earlier with the one. Yeah, do that in yoga, actually. Yeah, but you want to, you're reaching for things. I mean, are you a righty? Am I a righty? Are you right hand dominant? Oh, right hand, yes, yes, I yeah. hadn't heard that term. Yeah. Yes, I use my right hand. <laughs> Sorry, if you're like washing dishes or doing stuff, I mean, you're probably just overusing that right side, you know, I feel like your left side is weaker than if you're lifting something with two hands, you're probably using more on your right. So I'd really just try to train your left side a little bit more so you can even your seat out and really focus more mobility on the right side. Yeah, okay. I mean, when I get this pain, I just slow down my walking. Then I, when I get home, I sit down for literally two, three minutes. It's gone. It's yes. I just, I just, um, sounds gone a bit funny. Any other questions? I have a question. Um, yep. What um, breathing exercises do you recommend? Because I have um, basically, if I'm if I were to go into a spasm or anything like that, all this starts locking up this part right here, and it doesn't let me breathe. I struggle for breathing, so I'm trying to figure out an exercise to it kind of release that moment or just makes it easier to breathe because I do gasp for air. Is there a, a certain exercise that you can recommend? it might be like like a state like a mini panic state um so you just really want to try to you want to try not to kind of freak out about that situation you want to really try to calm, calm yourself as best as possible um and i would just try to really let everything relax and try to take deep breaths in hold for about three seconds and then exhale forcefully but you want to try to really kind of hold that air for a little bit and then forcefully exhale but it, it might just be like a stress thing that is caused a panic state. Um, the, the, calm it down as best as you can and not like really freak out about it because then it'll make it harder and harder. Yeah, because for me, for me, it's when I go into, I get full body spasms. I don't just get it on one part, on one side of my body or anything. It's a full body sp spasm. And my body will completely twist almost like, you know, the exorcist, the girl right there, it just completely twists. I've never broken a bone, never, nothing bad. It's just a full body spasm. But when I get them, this area right here completely tightens up as well. And it's very hard to breathe. Very hard. And it's like, I, I already know because I've been doing it for 10 years. And I just like, okay, I, I need to figure out. But it's getting worse and worse where I just gasp for air. Because sometimes I don't get any air for a bit like for, I, there's only been one occasion where i actually ended up passing out because i was getting no air at all and of course and then the hospital and, and all that but it is just very for me to breathe at times when that happens yeah i would uh i would see the doctor just to see what's going on okay all righty i have a suggestion violet um i've been meditating mm -hmm. for like 15 years um and I started out with the breath. Look into meditation apps such as Insight Timer, you have Calm. There's so many out there, but those are the two main ones I okay. use. And you start with the breath. If you start to learn diaphragmatic breathing, which is okay. instead of from the upper chest, when you get that kind of tightness, which I've experienced, um, and you learn to breathe from your diaphragm and how to control that and stay present, it may reduce the anxiety that comes with that tightening you know what i'm saying and maybe it'll it'll mm -hmm. calm the, the what were you calling the spasms and such that may be the anxiety that causes this who knows i don't know yeah. but i'm just saying meditation for me and anything when it comes to ms is is vital like that's the first thing i did this morning with my coffee and it's all of the it, it doesn't take long it could be just a one cup of tea or one cup of coffee focusing on your breath and just trying to block out everything aside around you. Um, eventually, with that discipline and practice over time, could really come in handy when those moments happen. So it's just a suggestion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Somebody asked about CBD oil. Um, I'm a card holding member of the medical marijuana, and I went through a neurologist. So 
the way the doctor explained, like, call a doctor, you don't know what you're getting. I go through a dispensary and stuff like that. I also have my side guy, you know, when I'm like running out. Um, so I'm not gonna lie, I might do a little things my way, but you know, you guys all hear that I'm pretty stubborn. Um, but if you go through a neurologist and you get a card, you will get, it's like a prescription, legit like a prescription. They will not over medicate you or they will ask you what your problems are. I've been through that whole process. It really works. And the creams are legit. You just got to find the ones that work for you. And I've tried like 12 until I found the one that I liked. And I don't know where it is. If not, I'd show you guys. If anything, I'll post it on my, my page today, later, and you guys can check it out. Is it like, uh, do you get really addicted to such kinds of ornaments or something? Is Pardon? That, do you get addicted to some kind, those kinds of ornaments of CBD? Um, no. Um, marijuana and CBD oil and or creams or anything of that nature are non-addictive. Um, can become habit forming in the sense of like your body becomes used to it, just like medication. So um, I kind of, I pull back on it sometimes when I feel like I don't need it. But like in these times where I, my body's in crisis mode, if you will, for lack of better words, um, I rely upon it a lot because it has um, helped me over time reduce the amount of pharmaceutical medications that I take. And even though those are still present, um, it's, it's a natural component that I can use to address spasms, insomnia, digestive problems, nausea, headaches, um, the gamut that we all experience on a daily basis. That stuff really helps. Like I used to take gabapentin, which all of you know is the devil. And I am no longer, I used to be on Tegretol, which is a very old medication used to be taking that four times a day to five times a day. Now I'm on one, maybe two, and I have de and I have eliminated gabapentin altogether, which are two very strong nerve pain medications. So just an FYI, find a neuro that is licensed, get a, a medical card in your state or country if it's where you are. Claire, I, you sound like you're not in the States. <laughs> I love you, girl. <laughs> so yeah, that's just my, my two bits about those two things because I've been using it for a long time. So we have a question from Diana C. I can see. Uh, she has written, what do you do for a neurological sclerosis uh, led on by MS due to insignificance? Someone with really poor sitting balance, bracing versus exercise. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, that's a tough question because there's there's a lot of lot of factors. So with the scoliosis, because I have patients that come in where they're bent one way and twisted, kind of like this, because the one side is so weak and it doesn't allow them to stay in that upright posture. And then as soon as we start losing that strength, we kind of just fall into that habit of being, you know, it's usually side bent one way and rotated. So whatever side that you are bent towards is the side that's tighter and the opposite side is the weaker side. So let's say I'm kind of like this to my right. That means my left side is, is weak and it doesn't allow me to kind of be in this upright posture. So what we want to do is reverse that. So if I'm bent to the right and bent to the right, I stretch up that whole side and I want to strengthen up my left side. So the way we would do that is, you know, the side that's weaker, you could try just some kind of like hip, hiking. You can try some side planks. Um, a simple one is really just trying to kind of bring your body and lean over this way to stretch it all out. You could try like a little stretch where if you're bent to the right, your right arm is going to come up and you're going to just lean away. So now we're going to let all this stretch. Um, you can have your arms here and really just try to do some retractions with the one side. This is a really good one with a TheraBand. Mm -hmm. And then seated balance, I mean, really just have to try to, you know, first start on something stationary, have two arms on there for support, go to one arm, go to fingertips, and then go to no arms. And then you can progress to sitting on something on stable, like if we sit on a pillow, you know, now we have a little bit of an unstable surface, same thing, start with two hands, progress to one, progress to fingertips, and then progress to no hands and just try to really balance. Um, those are the things that I would work on, but you know, if someone is in that state, then you should definitely be sit seeing a physical therapist or an occupational, um, you know, physical therapist or occupational therapist, because once you get those type of symptoms, kind of help 
help you out with the workouts, do some manual facilitation techniques. Um, you asked bracing about that question. I, I have had some of my patients with severe cases have someone specific with MS come and do custom bracing. You could try to wear those posture t-shirts that can help you. But the goal is that you want to perform exercises every day because once you get in that position, you really want to work on getting out of the position. It's probably not going to be fixed 100% because there's something called a, a fixed scoliosis versus a flexible. Fixed is just the curve is there and you're not going to change it. Whereas flexible, you might be seated like that in a postural position, but you can work on getting out of that position. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Um, I can see on Instagram, yep. I have a question from um, Kathy. Uh, Kathy is here with us. Uh, Kathy, would you like to ask a question yourself to doctor? But before that, again, it's uh, 10 minutes lag right now again. Maybe after 10 minutes, if we get this disconnect and we can join back again. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I don't even remember what my question was. <laughs> You have written that what help with what help with drag foot? Oh yeah. So just recently, um, so I've, I'm 20 years into multiple sclerosis, and I'm a trainer as well. And um, and I have just now experiencing some drag foot. Believe it or not, on my left on my left side. So um, I've just now just been kind of searching with devices and because it's kind of coming on just once in a while and I've been on my day break and so I'm now in the extended so I'm at, at every six weeks and I've been doing some of the exercises with my ankle and stuff so I guess my question is do I continue with the exercises and what would you recommend for um like the first device like I'm not in I don't need like a chair or anything like that but just a little help getting along so yeah I did have a couple people ask me those questions. So what mm -hmm. I'm going to guys, um, first, I think you can see my legs and ankles from here, correct? Uh, yes. So for drop foot, you want to just really focus on just bringing your toes up. Okay. But that could be difficult to do. Right. So one is do that in a seated position. Just sit there and try to bring your toes up. If that's easy, Take like a five pound weight and put mm -hmm. it on your foot and really just try to do like a bunch of reps because drop foot usually happens more like if you walk for 10 minutes or 20 minutes right. and at that point. So you really want to do a bunch, a bunch of repetitions. Um, if you don't have a weight handy, you can put like one leg on top of each other, give yourself resistance. Mm -hmm. So one leg on top and then you, you can try to bring your foot up and hold it for about 10 seconds, make an isometric contraction. Okay. If you're in a state where you're pretty good, at that point, you could try something called heel walking. So right okay. now, I'm heels. Right. Uh, you want to make sure you're not, when you're doing this, you're not like bent forward or you're not hyperextending backwards. The other thing is, a lot of times neurologists will say, oh, you have drop foot because you have MS. I find that a lot of my patients with drop foot also have back problems because if you have an L4, L5 disc that's compressing the nerve, maybe from MS, maybe not, um, that's going to not really, that's like an MS drug will not fix that. So you have to clear the back. Anyone, if you have back pain and you have drop foot and you have MS, I would always recommend having somebody order you a back x-ray and MRI because if you have like severe narrowing at the L4, L5, that correlates with those muscles for drop foot. Um, another easy exercise is really just kind of having your foot in front, have a TheraBand, and just try to pull your foot up. So that's called ankle dorsiflexion. Um, and then when you're walking, you really want to try to walk with pulling your big toe up. If you can try to focus on firing your big toe to come up as you step, that's going to facilitate the whole ankle. Now, if the muscles are that weak and it's really not working, um, they also make electrical neuromuscular stimulation units, but it's not just general e-stim, it's called Russian stim where you put the muscles on the kind of shin and that'll help fire. It's gonna help fire the uh, muscles itself. Um, there's also physiology taping you can put on. So actually, you know, we've been, I'm not sure if you've been following, but we've started making like an MS Mondays kind of thing. So when asked about back pain as well as drop, 
I can do a full uh, video series on drop foot. Um, but mainly make sure that you clear out the back because if your back, if the nerve is compressed from your spine, you're, you're really not going to do too much to help it. Um, mm -hmm. And if none of that works, and yes, there are bracing, but you want to make sure you're not like in a locked brace. You want to make sure mm -hmm. that it's something that just kind of like a spring leaf, um, something that as you step, it'll kind of bring your foot up, but not like a fixed AFO because a fixed AFO is going to really just not give you any range of motion whatsoever. Okay. Um, so I don't recommend that. So I would start, you, you know, if, if, it, if you have the drop foot and it's pretty bad, really start with seated ankle dorsiflexion mm -hmm about 50 times throughout the day, progress resistance on there, progress to standing, and then progress to heel walking itself. Um, another good one is sidestepping that you can do because mm -hmm. sidestep, you need to have your feet up. And then you can even do like step ups because, you know, focus on bringing that big toe up to kind of clear. The okay, thank you. Yeah, but I that's um I had actually in the past week a couple of people reach out and ask about the drop foot. I'm not sure if you were one of them, but I um, I, was, I just forgot. I think I just wondered if it was all the stress with everything going on, if that had to just to do with it as well. If just all of that just compiled. So yeah, it could be stress. You know, some weakness. It, it could also be weather related. If it's mm -hmm. really hot and be fit, um, feeling fatigued and we just we have to figure out what it is that's called right. you know I'm not sure if like a lot of people might not mention to really focus on bringing your big toe up but if you can right. bring your toe up that's going to propel the whole foot to to dorsiflex that's a great idea yeah but I, I think we'll definitely make a little a video because what we started doing is two weeks ago is any questions that some individuals may have i think the first one we did was what do you do with an exacerbation of symptoms and kind of make mm -hmm. that into a video some low level exercise so we'll make one for core strengthening we'll also make one for drop foot and we'll post yeah. those the next two mondays yeah i love that great thank you so much you're welcome good question thank you any other questions Sorry. So there's one question which I have, and we talk about the foot pain. Uh, you know, I feel sometimes my dorsal area of my foot uh, is like too um, stretchy. You know, it's too tight. I've tried lots of exercises, stretches, like putting my foot up and down, going round ways, but it really doesn't help. Especially it happens during the night when I'm sleeping. I feel the dorsal area is like too tight. Yeah, so a good stretch for that, a really nice stretch, and this might be hard to do, um, is really being like on the knees in a kneeling position. Curl your toes down and really just rock your hips back like a child's pose position. So I can show this. So you kind of just want to be here and then just rock, rock the hips back. I think you guys can see and making sure your toes are curled down because that is going to help stretch the whole foot. Another one is you can take your foot on top and have a stretch out strap or a towel and pull your foot up. But another one is just try to put it underneath like the big toe and stretch the big toe up because many times with the MS, the feet are walking very flat because they don't have the muscles on the top to support that ankle dorsiflexion. So we want to make sure we have that full range of motion and stretch out the big toe that's going to help stretch out the whole bottom of the foot and then trying to do that stretch that'll help stretch out like the shin bones. Okay. Okay. I'll try that. I mean, I had tried by putting my foot like this, but not with the pressure that you're recommending. Okay. Um, stretch for a good like 45 seconds to a minute. Most people when they stretch only do like a 10 or 15 second hold, but we want to really try to stretch it out for a good minute. Because 10 to 15 seconds, your muscles will just begin to start stretching. But if you can maintain that hold, you'll feel a nice, a much bigger stretch. Okay, um, okay so um, this session might end in some time. Do we have more questions to take so that we can come back in the third session or we can just um, do the winding up right now? I have a question. Um, is there any suggestion? I could go for anybody on this one. Any suggestions for... Um 
for the cognitive part just to um I don't know because I, I started getting those um I know them as the squirrel moments where I'm like paying attention to somebody but I just cannot understand what they're saying or doing it's just like I know it's there but it's just not processing does anybody have any suggestions it's just like it just you're there but it's just Cognitive component, um, we touched about this a little bit earlier. In my physical therapy practice, I always try to incorporate yeah. some cognitive exercises with all the other ones that I do. But if it's a true, true cognitive issue, I'd recommend one seeing a neuropsychologist where they can assess your cognitive function, reaction function. And then more so, they have something called cognitive therapists that can help you with all of that. Well, they'll have you like, you know, read your story and try to record things. Um, I would try to do, there's a lot of apps that you can actually use too, um, mm -hmm. off the top of my head, I don't remember what they're all called, but because there's so many, but there's a lot of cognitive apps that you can do, like puzzles, um, word findings, there's, there's many things you can do on your own. I would try first, like trying to do 15 minutes a day on your own, and you know, that seems to improve, or you do feel like you are starting to decline, um, I would try to check with a neuropsychologist who can do like a full neuropsychological examination, find out where are you deficient and specifically, and from there get set up with like a good cognitive therapist that can help you with those symptoms. Okay. Yeah, because what me, I started, oh, I I'm think sorry. I'm, my brain is just shut off and I really cannot process anything. <laughs> so all I need to do is uh, <laughs> eat good and sleep good. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. There's there's brain fog that definitely occurs. Um, but you, you gotta we gotta train our memories because you know not even with MS, but as we age, we start to lose. So we gotta, you know, I would definitely recommend doing some cognitive stuff at home. A lot of puzzles. I'm I'm sure some of you people, um, you guys on the chat can really help answer what have you done for yourselves to help with some of that, you know, forgetfulness or f fatigue because. Everyone's gonna find a different way to learn, but maybe you guys can share some of your strategies with the group. Also, really good supplementation. What is that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we do have, I mean, in our clinic, we sell some vitamins that can help with memory, but do you have any specific ones that, you, that you've that you used that you can share? I know um, post, uh, I had a severe car accident with head trauma three years ago and they put me on higher doses of folic and bees and magnesium, a lot of healing. There are a lot of healing uh, supplements, vitamins that help. Um, on top of, I did see a neuropsychologist for a year and a half. So I do believe in that. Okay. Um, Am I unmuted? Yes. No, we heard. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I take, um, you know, what I take specifically is called Brain House, um, which has all those um, ingredients in it. Um, so but I, it helped a lot. And then a lot of the games you're talking about, a lot of the interaction and the memory games help. Um, okay. Um, I have one last question uh, written by one of the... Um, for um, MS persons and she has written that how to, ex I think uh, you've already answered this, but since I've got this question, I will read it out to you. Uh, how to exercise my foot for tiptoe feel ill. Um, I use tape and sonic block for relief foot pain. I'm sorry. Um, what do you do to relieve foot pain? Is that the question? She has, uh, she is using teeth, kinesiolog. Uh, she's from Indonesia, so I'm not sure what is that. Um, but she's asking for the pain. I want to touch back on like the question from before. So one of the supplementations that we use is also ginkgo forte. Um, that's a good one for memory. And then just foods like eating rosemary is, is another recommended one that could be good for, for memory. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I would try to check those out. But again, you know, just check with check with the neurologist too. They might have some good advice for memory ones. I saw someone put like a Google Calendar, have some reminders. That's also very good. That way, you know, because what happens if we start forgetting stuff, we might get a little bit stressful that we're not, you know, remembering what we used to. So 
having strategies like a calendar can be very beneficial. Absolutely. So, do we have any questions to ask, Doctor? I'm sorry, one second, please. Uh, please, I want to ask one thing, you know. Uh, got to take the five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a question to ask you guys. You know, uh, lately I have started taking iron capsules, vitamins, and stuff, calcium. Uh, the reason is, you know, I'm seeing that I'm having tremendous hair fall. I don't know why. They, and it actually ha started happening after my last relapse that I had. I'm not sure if you guys have ever faced this. Uh, a lot of hair fall problem is re related to this. I think it's some side effects of some medication because once I got off certain medications, it just medication my hair is normal. Seven years now, but I have never had this kind of problem ever. But this time, it's just worse. I asked one of the other warriors, and she said that um, she's taking vitamin B12 for that. I take that. I take mm. that every day, um, but I take that because I don't eat meat. So I thought it was a good one to take, but it doesn't really affect my hair or anything. My hair's just thin, so I have to boost it. <laughs> if I'm going anywhere special, I have to kind of make an effort to make it big. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've ever suffered of a hair loss, except when I dye my hair, but that's completely different. But I, I've never really had hair loss as far because I have really thick hair and I have it. <sighs> if I don't take care of it, it just... You know, like when I shut down my camera, you see that little trolls that comes up. <laughs> my niece is that that's my baby because <laughs> the hair. <laughs> but that's how my hair gets. I just have very full hair. But I've never had hair loss. You know, I retract that. I did have hair loss and I was like about 14, 15. But that's because of the lupus because I had to get on some medication for it. Yeah, that was completely different. But after that, I've never suffered. My hair came out better after that. So I'm not even... Sure, and we, we did it the old school way because I'm half African, and they were like, oh, put this and that. And of course, my mom was like, okay, let's do it. So yeah, you don't want to know what she did to my hair. <laughs> but it worked in my case, and my hair came out better. And the suggestion was like tomatoes and something else. And I was like, well, mom knows best, right? <laughs> you're, in, you're in India right now. The fag is going on for hair losses. The onion a hair oil. So everybody's running for that. <laughs> treatments yeah like that also but yeah. something to do with the maybe the steroids which i take in my last took in my last uh, relapse after that it's just bad yeah huh. that, that might be one thing and then of course like i said i'm half mexican so on my dad's side they were like oh start braiding your hair that helps too and don't wash it as often and i was like okay i was only like 14, like it's 14, 15, they used to see me with long hair braided and everything. It, it, for me, it would work. But that, then again, it had nothing to do with my MS. Like my, it was with other medication. But then again, when I think about it, lupus and MS medication are somewhat similar. So like I said, it might be due to some type of medication that makes your hair loss. Like, I mean, you know what I got. Right now, I'm just having a little tongue thing going on. I just can't but yeah th that's my suggestion is just like try to find a natural thing for your hair and it comes actually better than before okay um, guys do we have any other question to ask the doctor right now uh, Iman, do you have any questions from UAE and she's also running an MS page MS page I can't hear you the phone is on mute properly. By mistake, she's. I'm sorry. It's on mute. Um, you can type down the question if you are not able to talk.
All right, well, we can yeah. reconvene next Saturday. Sure. Uh, maybe we can just wait for a second to, for how to type, and then we can just leave. These sessions are really good because there's always something that you pick up that you haven't thought of. So thank you. Thank you, guys. It's been a it's been a pleasure. So happy uh, World MS Day for everyone. Yay. Uh, my company just made like a World MS video, so I'm gonna post that on my Instagram page. Um, but like I said, if you guys uh, questions you could always message me I'm going to make the videos for the core strength and the foot drop um, I'm, I think I'm gonna actually post the foot drop one first from what we discussed because I, I think that that's pretty important and then maybe the week after we'll post the uh, core strength one but if you guys have any questions in the meantime then uh, message thank you so much for all your help all right thank you guys enjoy thank the rest you. of your day bye guys bye, bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.